Hello everyone, uh, this is Professor Ramanandan HS, uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, uh, MIT Mysore. So today we will continue on the discussion on the subject Mechatronics with the subject code of 17ME 753. So we have successfully completed the okay, electronics part. So we have seen what is a programmable logic controller till the previous classes. So actuation, okay, advanced robotics and the other part are being okay, simultaneously covered there related to the automation. So important core engineering lies in the understanding of the actuation systems. Okay, mechanical engineer's task is to uh, okay, continuously transmit the force, energy and power. So an engineer always thinks about okay, doing these things, transmitting of energy, force, power, because we have to do some work okay, with or without the involvement of human beings to the best. So by utilizing the available energy resources. So how do we do that? Okay, that is what we study by using the two important uh, renewable as well as few non-renewable source of energies we are using in this module. The name of the module is module 5, so hydraulic and pneumatic systems. So you have come across these terms before also, but uh, let us try to understand or brush up few basics before entering into topic. So before that we will have a glimpse on the contents, okay, one is the actuation systems, uh, hydraulic and pneumatic systems, classification of valves and uh, one of the valve, pressure relief valve. So these will be the, these are the contents of today's presentation. So hydraulic and pneumatic systems, before that something called as actuation systems. So understand word by word, actuator, before entering into module one should understand uh, if there is something need to be studied, so why you have to study things? So right from morning to evening, we are flooded with actuators. Okay, if I start naming one after the other, you will get into the concept. So early in the morning, we will just try to find out water as soon as we get up. Okay, for maybe our nature calls or maybe cleansing process, we will switch over to water. So how do we get that water? at your home. So true rain is the natural source of energy, but the rain is water is being okay, efficiently transported uh, to the okay, municipal corporation or to the okay, nearby over at tanks. From that tank it has to be pumped to the, okay, the sump of at your domestic okay, home. So all these process needs utilization of power the movement of the fluid like water okay right from the the reservoir or the dam to the water out okay water resource maybe the pump house or to the the layout or the residential area overhead tanks then it has to be pumped to the individual houses and then from that house sump you are okay again pumping it to the overhead tank of your house, there your water is available for the use. So right from that application, okay, we are using actuator right from the early morning as soon as we wake up, okay, we want water that is being, okay, made available to us from the actuators, okay, example is pumps there, basically we are using pumps and motors. So next example is as soon as you finish your purpose with water, okay, we will go to maybe using the transportation system. Okay, you go to fill the air or gas okay, or maybe gasoline or diesel in the petrol pumps or bunks. Okay, again, how do they store the petrol or the diesel in the petrol bunks? Okay, is the next level of usage of actuators there. So right from the storage of the pump to the, okay, how the, from the storage tank to the uh, fuel gun, the petrol or the diesel reaches to the fuel gun. 
so entire operation is totally dependent on the actuator okay we use the various types of motors okay valves okay the pumps during the application from the to lift from the sump to the your electrode gun the once the service man operates the electrode gun the fuel automatically fills into your the bike or the car or any domestic vehicle tank so everywhere we are filled with the actuators pumps and motors okay so it may be in your air conditioners it it is used in your refrigerators we are using okay compressors we are using okay the prime mover as motor to drive the compressor in your okay refrigerators if, if it is in your air conditioning where you want a conditioned air okay and ambient atmosphere throughout your residence so that is also being driven by so many motors okay as well as okay, actuators so why i am stressing on actuators is because the work is being carried out by a device okay which is totally a under control okay work is being carried out by a device which is totally under control so it is a okay controlled system an actuator is nothing but a controlled system simply we have defined it as okay actuator system is nothing but it can be set in motion or to which motion can be imparted okay so basically cylinders so what we use in our okay the applications like earth movers so it may be your jcbs it may be okay the industrial forklift so it may be the drilling machine so it may be a welding machine or any shaper machine so all kinds of machine tools are flooded with so many actuators okay so because you have so many set of okay individual as well as combination of okay, sequential motion being involved there which are happening from the machine through the through one small input the machine is automatically taking care of so many motion with the help of pumps and motors so we call them as actuators because they can be imparted with motion or movement okay from rest to movement totally it is under control the action is taking place under control they are called as actuators basically motors or cylinders okay so you can easily define it this way so actuation systems system is nothing but it is a group of elements which are arranged in a particular order okay you cannot see a random chaotic system there so they are arranged in a particular order to get a possible outcome or an objective to attain a okay objective so you can see the definition of actuation systems they are the elements of control system which are responsible for transforming the output of a microprocessor or control system into a controlling action on a machine or a device so very simple it elaborative definition of an actuation system simply you can say it as to which motion can be imparted or okay from which motion okay it which can be set into motion so that is a simple definition so if you want an elaborative complete comprehensive definition this holds good so it is an element of control system because it takes care of the control once the okay you can take an example of the fuel being filled to your okay vehicle tanks so once the electro it is electromechanical system basically it deals with electronic okay microprocessor based control where there is sensor being involved where there is a display okay where there is totally a computer controlled system or a microcontroller controlled system along with that you have mechanical systems like you have pumps okay uh, the you have motor there you have solenoid valve you can see the fuel gun is nothing but it is employed with a solenoid valve and above you can see an electronic coil around the the solenoid okay fuel gun so you have temperature and flow rate control being taking place in the okay fuel gun or at the nozzle okay right from sump to nozzle so it is totally under control so once the operator gives the so many amount of okay fuel to be filled that much amount of fuel is filled to the 
vehicle tank. So totally it is under control of an operator. So that is achieved by using okay, actuation system. That is why we are quoted the word here. It is an element of control system. So which is responsible for transforming an output. Okay, Transforming. So transform word is used because it takes okay, various forms of energy. So basically we use electricity is, as an energy. But total output energy is okay usually usually in mechanical engineering we take output energy as mechanical energy so that is why the word is used transforming an output of a microprocessor based control system microprocessor gives a output so that a work should be carried out the electric signal comes as an input and output is usually the mechanical energy it may be lifting of a load like something in your okay elevators or lifts what we use or it may be a hoist, automobile hoist used in the engineering workshops to lift the okay, vehicles or maybe a compartment of the train for welding or spray painting. So many operations to be carried out. Or it may be okay, usually the rotation of an element okay, or it may be opening or closing of valve to fill the fluid. Like I take, took an example of fuel gun. Okay, the certain amount of fluid to be filled into the container. So there comes the flow, control of the flow. So that is also a task of an actuator. So it takes care of total control of a system, usually motion, okay, electrical energy into mechanical energy. That is why we have, okay, in the definition you have a term called as transforming the output of microprocessor. Microprocessor gives the input as, okay, in the form of electrical energy as a signal but total work carried out is a out and out mechanical work, okay, physical form of work being observed there. Okay. So this is a simple definition of actuation system. So they are usually we see okay, in your syllabus you have mentioned pneumatics and hydraulics. So pneumatics, the word itself says pneumatics is nothing but the where we use compressed air. Air is available okay, in abundance in the atmosphere. But to put it into work, to convert that air into work, okay, you have to pressurize it. So that should be compressed within a closed space or a confined space. That compressed air, from that you can get work done. How? We will see. Okay. So the physical and chemical property of air okay, confines us to use it to a limited pressure, usually one bar atmospheric pressure. Okay. Or in terms of PSI, if you put it across... So the operating pressure of a pneumatic system where we use a compressed air, it is usually 80 to 100 pounds per square inch PSI. So 80 to 100 PSI, that is a limiting pressure or the operating pressure of any pneumatic system. Okay. So if you convert that into kilopascal, it may be in the range of 160 to 550 or sometimes up to 660 kilopascal is the range of operating, okay, working pressure of the pneumatic system. Okay, so second thing is hydraulics, uh, where we use okay compressed liquid. Okay, for uh, example, I have quoted there the solenoid valves. Okay, or maybe in your dump trucks, the telescopic okay uh, action of the cylinders we have seen in the dump trucks where you use it as dumpers. So many tons of maybe mud or maybe ore. Okay, maybe sand is being transferred from one place to another place with the help of dumpers and dump trucks. Okay, telescopic cylinders are actuated because of the okay, highest pressure of the, okay, the compressed liquid. Usually liquids, it varies from okay, uh, uh, the mineral oils. Mineral oils are petroleum based oils because water has lot of problems. Okay, when you involve water in hydraulics, okay, Basically, leakage is the first problem and second thing is corrosion. To deal with corrosion and leakage, so in order to avoid those two because of the property of water. So, in case of hydraulic system, we can see maximum usage of petroleum based and mineral oils. Okay. So, it works at the pressure of 1000 psi to 5000 psi. So, you might have seen in the steering system and the suspension system also. Steering system and the braking in, in your automobiles, you have brake fluids, 
with the help of master cylinder and calipers you can see the disc brakes operating with the help of the confined fluid you can see the steering system in the four wheelers they are all power steered the power steering works with a smaller input of the steering being having a larger impact on the road wheels how is that possible okay in automobile engineering that is possible because of okay the usage of power steering is assisted with hydraulic system okay the impact of pressure at the road wheels is too high because of using of master cylinders okay which will take care of the tilting of road wheels to a greater extent with the small input being given at the steering okay so many examples you can give suspension system also so it works at a pressure of 35 mega pascal to 65 mega pascals uh, ultimately it can go up to an extent of okay 10000 psi pounds per square inch that is the ultimate pressure range of any hydraulic system okay so we'll see a small uh, schematic arrangement of hydraulic system so you can just imagine the okay petrol bunk or any okay so simple hydraulic system so this is the sump in which the oil is stored okay oil is stored at a particular if it is a mineral oil or a petroleum oil it should be stored at a, a particular temperature because of its okay vaporizing temperature vaporizing problem so it should be stored at a confined temperature so you have few devices like pump motor okay non return valve so prv is nothing but pressure relief valve so you have accumulator and the return line from the accumulator fuel is supplied to the actuator okay it is not mentioned here so it is supplied to the actuator basically cylinder so oil which is stored at a okay pressure here okay atmospheric pressure so because of the prime mover say motor which supplies power to the pump so because of the pressure difference between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure being created by the pump in the the pipeline okay in the pipeline so the difference in pressure okay creates a suction of the hydraulic oil and the pressurized oil from the pump is allowed to go through the non return valve the function of non return valve is to see that the pressure is continuously sustained in the line so that because the pressure is applied from the okay pressurized liquid so if there is small amount of okay the okay the liquid coming back in the because of the back pressure in the line that leads to loss of pressure in the pressure line so that shouldn't happen that's the purpose of using non return valve so because of the non return valve the pressure is continuously sustained in the pressure line so next comes pressure relief valve so this is a okay safety valve which is being provided so that the pipeline or the pressure line is continuously working under safety zone or safe pressure okay pressure relief valve function is to see that if the pressure exceeds the operating pressure if the pressure exceeds the working pressure the fluid should be allowed to return back to the reservoir or the tank okay so last component is accumulator okay accumulator is nothing but an extra reservoir or a small okay tank which is being provided in the line so that any loss of pressure apart from using a non return valve okay and a pressure relief valve okay because of this any loss of pressure if it is existing in the pressure line so then it will compensate to the loss of pressure immediately because it is a small set of okay it is it works like a, a glucose supplied to the okay sportsman so it is an energy booster okay so that it will sustain the pressure required in the line so uh, you can see here the enlarged sketch of a small example of a okay, gas bladder type of accumulator so there will be a bladder here filled with the air okay so this is the gas charging valve to fill the gas to the bladder surrounded by you have hydraulic fluid here so what happens is once the hydraulic fluid enters into this 
okay, accumulator, the air in the bladder it contracts, the air in the bladder contracts and okay, you have the liquid stored at a standard pressure. Okay. Accumulator work is to store liquid without losing its pressure. The pressure should be sustaining in the accumulator. It cannot simply store the fluid. It should store a pressurized fluid inside it. So that is the purpose of using a gas bladder here. So gas bladder contracts when the fluid enters into the okay, accumulator. So whenever the pressure line demands okay, to increase the pressure, so what happens is the accumulator valve opens here. There will be a valve being provided here okay, basically. So from that the fluid okay, enters into the pressure line enters into the pressure line so that now the bladder will gas bladder will apply okay it will expand so that the pressurized fluid is supplied again to the pressure line so i repeat so gas bladder will contract whenever the fluid enters into accumulator because of the suction from the pump in the pressure line okay so whenever the system demands more pressure there is a loss of pressure in the line system demands pressure automatically the pressurized fluid flows to the pressure line and the gas bladder will okay, expand and again wait for the some more fuel to accumulate in the accumulator chamber. So this is a simple setup of a hydraulic system being demonstrated. So next comes the classification of the valves. So basically three things are involved here. You have to control the flow of fluid. Fluid is nothing but air or liquid. So one can control. First thing is pressure. Pressure okay control valves second thing is you can control the flow the flow control valves and third one is direction control valve okay in case of direction control valve the start stop and reversing the direction of actuator is being achieved okay i have to control the direction because if i want to change the operation mode the lifting of okay elevator goes to a highest altitude and should come back to the lowest altitude. There it is a vertical cylinder, it acts on gravitation. Take off the other example, where the tool has to move from home position to tool position. Again, it has to come back from tool position to home position. This is a horizontal movement. Okay? How to achieve this horizontal movement? You have to reverse the direction of motor. So how to reverse the direction of motor there? By reversing the direction of flow of the fluid in the cylinder. So how to reverse the direction of flow in the cylinder by using, okay, you should change the direction of flow by using some valve. So that is the work of direction control valve. Okay. Flow control valve is nothing but an operator. It takes charge of the total operation inside the okay, actuator or the hydraulic system. So pressure control valve obviously it is the power okay, which is being totally preserved throughout the system. So pressure control valve flow control valve and direction control valve. We will see this throughout the sub classification and types of valves under these three main okay, understanding of the classification of valves later. Okay. So under that pressure control valve okay, major classification that is a core source of power in the okay, hydraulic system. We will see one of the valve okay, there are two types direct acting and indirect acting valves. So first is direct acting pressure relief valve. So there are few types of valves here. Pressure relief valves, pressure reducing valves, you have pressure unloading and loading valves, okay, pressure sequencing, so many types. Okay. The same pressurized liquid can be used to sequence, it can be used to lift or okay, drop the load, it can be used to relieve the pressure, it can be used to okay, counterbalance okay, things. So many operations can be performed with the use of pressure okay, control valves. We will see one of the operations, direct acting pressure relief valve. A simple demonstration is by using okay, direct acting pressure PRV. So you can see here, this is a puppet with a spring, okay, with an adjustment screw to control the spring force. Spring, the compression of the spring can be controlled by using a screw here. So this is the inlet pressure. I told you. Pressure relief valve is to okay, control the pressure within the safety limit. Uh, it should divert the excess pressure into the okay, sump or the oil tank. So how does it do? 
so you can see here this is nothing but the tank <coughs> so this is the tank portion so you can see here okay once the inlet pressure enters into the excess pressure oil enters into the puppet the puppet opens or closes to tank based on inlet pressure and spring tension you can adjust the spring tension with the help of a screw okay so it enters here so once it exceeds the spring pressure the puppet opens and fluid directs from the inlet valve to the tank here okay so it is nowhere connected to the line okay some of the fluid or total fluid can also enter into the tank depending upon the safe pressure limit so this is a circuit diagram shown here pump and this is a graphic symbol of pressure okay relief valve and uh, pressure meter here pressure gauge is being mentioned along with the load and the actuator so this is a circuit diagram okay you can see here so this is actually the normal position graphic symbol you can see it is a spring return valve so there is a pressure line here pressure line if it is closed to the tank you can see here the arrow mark is above the line okay so that means to say the valve is not open so it is closed in the second sketch you can see here pressure line whenever there is over pressure in the pressure line so fluid is directed to the tank you can see the arrow mark is heading towards the pressure line and so directly the fluid enters into the tank so this is open to the tank condition where the spring pressure is exceeded and the fluid enters into the tank so hope this content of today has reached the uh, to the fullest of knowledge uh, thank you